Hallelujah. Good. How are you? I'm trying to get my tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's what, yeah, it's, it's the process. I know, you have to talk a lot. Huh? I never talk. <laughs> I'm always behind a computer, so it's weird. Um, uh, apologies if I'm not articulate. Oh. Are you good? Uh, yes, I am now. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Hello. Uh, you are the all-seeing, all-knowing. What can you tell us? It's awesome. <laughs> um, it's wild. I mean, we've been... We're in Texas. It's a show about this crazy town full of supernatural people, people who have secrets, people who have backstories they're running from. Every episode, we tell them a story about one of our Midnighters, and we learn a little bit. We glean a little bit of information about how they got to this remote town. Texas. Um, and because our Midnighters are so diverse, so are the stories. So Bobo's backstory is very different than Lem's backstory. And so every episode has its own vibe. Um, so some of them are a little more action heavy, some are a little more thoughtful, some are a little more romantic. And I think, um, as I described the show, it's everything I love in a blender. And so <laughs> it's all of it. I mean, what did you. Uh, I mean, why do you think that the Charlene Harris books make for a good team? I mean, they, she, they did it with True Blood, yeah. and so why do you think um, Midnight Texas is, is, is made for TV? I think she has winning characters, honestly. I mean, her characters are always surprising. We're going to bring you some friends. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can accept that. <laughs> um, but she has really great characters. They're funny and they're always surprising. They've got weird backstories and they're really rich. It's not just about story, it's about the people in it. Hi. And so I feel like. Hi, Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Monica. Hello. Thank you for having us. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Did you yeah. start already? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Huh? So you fill in good stuff. <laughs> uh, well, welcome. Uh, I will say, uh, I'll go with the thing that I prepared before you guys sat down here. Um, I was happy to hear that there's a lot of practical effects in the show. I feel like that. Yes. I, I appreciate a good practical effect. So I can talk about uh, using them and how they either helps or does not help through the process. <laughs> Um, I think it, as from my point of view as an actor, it definitely helps to have something to react to uh, on the yeah. day. <laughs> uh, as if, um, I think the special, uh, the, is it special? Yes, yeah, special, special. special effects team was incredible. The prosthetic work yes. is amazing. Um, I would scare Sarah from time to time just sending her pictures of me in makeup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's really upsetting. And Really realistic and really disturbing. realistic. And sometimes it would be like Dead Aubrey's prosthetic was in the parking lot sometimes. Right. And you'd walk by and like, ah! yeah. like, I hated that stupid thing. But then thing. the actress herself had to get in, <laughs> in, in makeup for uh, like hours, like hours. four or five yeah. hours, I think, before um, we could it was, shoot. It was and then gross. Was, even gross. when she's lying in bed next to me, so that's all real. She's all there. The bed, you don't really, it doesn't really read that much on camera, but the bed is like completely it's drenched. Wet. It's, it's wet, it's cold water, and she's there, and there's a little guy behind the bed <laughs> pumping water. Yeah, with a tube out that goes. Out, out her, her mouth. mouth, and then we erase it in post. Um, um, yeah, I like the little guy just behind her. Like, <laughs> no, it's so weird. <laughs> it, it was pretty incredible. I mean, it all starts with Manfred um, coming to Midnight, Texas. Can you just talk about how, like, the impact he has on this town once he gets there? I mean, um, yeah. um, well, he. We, Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to figure out how to frame that question because there's so many of you just want the first episode. Um, no, Manfred, look, this is a town of outsiders who come in who never fit in anywhere. So some people are willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Lem knows Manfred's grandma. How he knows that, we'll figure that, you'll learn that in a few episodes. But, um, so he's willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Other characters are not so sure, and even Manfred's not so sure he wants to hang out there. So it's sort of a, you know, there's a little friction before he decides whether or not he wants to be, actually become a man. Well, the, the circumstances in the pilot sort of force him to stay because he's, he's a witness. Yes. He's considered a witness to the crime, to obvious right. death. But then I think that by the end of the episode, he's there's already the seed 
in him of, of maybe coming to terms with uh, looking for something beyond his usual selfish ways and, and, and that there's value in, in helping others and joining a, a common cause. Right. Yeah, I like how he says, like, uh, normally I'm the freak in the room, and now it's yeah. like, you know, much more major freak. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and I think that, you know, for someone who never fits in, to see people who also don't fit in, it's kind of like, oh, maybe there's a place for me here, because I don't think Netflix had another place for himself except that RV. And although he's embracing his uh, psychic abilities, to make money, in order to make money, he's still very uh, conflicted about them and doesn't, doesn't control his powers very well. And so to see people who are more at ease with their differences, I think, is, is, is inspiring. Yeah. Um, for each of you, and for you guys, aside from your own characters, do you have a favorite, favorite resident in the town? Freak. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Oh. Good answer. Um. <laughs> I like everybody. I love Bobo and PG. Just give it back, bro. I mean, obviously, I love Manfred. Um, oh, but then, no, my favorite is the Rev. Oh, not yeah, 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 me too. No. There's That's more, true. There's more exciting things to come. Very soon. Very yeah. soon. So, too, focuses on two. his yeah. um, who he is and why What he kind is. of wear animal he is. Yeah. That one's crazy. <laughs> Let's get back. I mean, you talk about, um, you know, Craig sort of takes a liking to Manfred pretty much right away. <laughs> Can you just talk about... <laughs> she, hasn't, she hasn't seen a guy who's yeah. alive. He's like in the right age range. Yeah, it's, it's like funny, but it's true that one of the factors of living in Midnight, Texas is that there's no one Creek's age, and there hasn't been for the entire, like, ten years that she's lived there. So I feel like for somebody to be gutsy enough to come to this town that's, like, a town of Greeks is very attractive for her. And um, the fact that it's a bad boy psychic is just icing on the cake. <laughs> And uh, that leads me to ask my question. I think you answered part of this already, and it's something I'm going to ask you, um, all of the cast members today, which is how, what, how do you think the trajectory of your character changes throughout the season? Which I think you answered a little bit. Well, yeah, there's definitely a beginning of, it, of, yeah. of an acceptance, but but I think um, once Manfred becomes sort of poised to be the the savior, which was, we hint at in the trailers and all that, so we haven't really talked about that. But um, um, I, so it, it's a, it is a, a bit of a classical hero's journey, um, and like in a classical hero's journey, I, I think Manfred's reluctant to. Uh, Accept that he can, he can be that good of a man. Right. <laughs> um, and Manfred was raised in a caravan with his grandma, who's like, when there's trouble, let's leave. Like that's the that's just, that's what he knows. And so to even stay put somewhere is an advancement. It just requires a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of compromise on his part. Right. And uh, I think it's 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 all part of becoming someone that he can look at in the mirror. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's like our show really thinks about community and that people can't do stuff by them. Like, the world is less good when you're alone, when you don't have anyone watching your back, when you don't have a community of people to, like, be with. And Although so think, Midnight will challenge that idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they're still fun. And Sometimes. interestingly, for Creek, like what we talked about before we started shooting the first season was that she was kind of going to learn how to go from being like a daughter and a sister mm -hmm. to being an adult mm -hmm. woman who's independent and um, isn't defined by those roles. Do you feel like there is an advantage in having a shorter episode, like not being every 24 episodes to tell the story and have kind of a shorter one? Do you feel like there's an advantage to it or would you? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, with 22 episodes, you're just trying to finish. <laughs> we actually got to think about what is this, the whole story of the 10 episode season. So there's a beginning, middle, and end. Every character gets their arc. Like it let us really approach it like a novel almost, like there's 10 chapters. 
and every chapter has its own beginning, middle, and end, but they add up to a total story. So I think it just, in terms of our ability to sort of craft the story, it really helps, um, for sure. And sleep was good. <laughs> yeah. And the episodes felt like they were dense, and there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. Of there's a lot happening. Um, I, mean, yeah. I didn't feel stretched out. I no, like, I mean, it felt like we were going somewhere. Yes, we didn't. There weren't episodes where you were just treading water. Every episode's moving forward. Yeah, how 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 did being in New Mexico sort of lend itself? Um, I think it did. I think it definitely lent. Um, spirit to it like it's kind of it's like no other place that I've been it's a desert yes. the sunsets and sunrises are insane and where we shot was like surrounded by mountains. Um, mountains and like a flat expanse of like dust yeah we built the town on the flat expanse of dust yeah <laughs> so um so it's pretty incredible to like have this town sort of behind our stages in the middle of nowhere um and also when you're away from home for such a long period of time, you have no, nothing else to dedicate yourself to, so this was sort of... <laughs> <laughs> so you can live That's how I felt. Yes. <laughs> well, and we were doing a lot of night shoots. Yes. So shooting really late into the night and start going to work at like 3 p.m., um, which puts you in a different yeah. headspace, for sure. <laughs> Ready to... What's an episode you What's an episode you guys are looking forward to people seeing, um, especially why? Other than the pilot. Well, I'm really looking forward to episode six because you learn a lot about Greek's backstory. I'm really looking forward to episode eight because you you learn a lot about, a lot about Manfred's backstory and he finally uh, faces his. Uh, Pill addiction. Right. And, and, uh, yeah, it gets really dark, and um, and you see, yeah, uh, I'll say, you 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 see Manfred as a little boy, and and his relationship with with um, Zelda when she was living. Um, I didn't get to play the boy. Monica wouldn't let well, me. Well, because you're not five. I mean, special. Uh, I mean, special yeah, yeah. That, that wouldn't have been, been creepy. Don't know. Benjamin Button. Right. I'm also looking forward to episode three. Where you get to go oh, back in time at yes. midnight and yes. see it through Lem's eyes. That's Lem's backstory. Mid midnight in the 19th century, so it becomes a period piece for an episode. Yeah, because we learn why Lem is who he is and how he got to be that. I remember reading that script and being like, oh. I can't believe we're pulling this off. That's exactly, I was like, they're going to let us do this? Yeah. <laughs> yes! They yeah, did. it's awesome. So, uh, yeah. They're all, they're all crazy. So every, I mean, even though there's like a, a long arc to the season and everything's sort of like driving forward, every episode has a, like a distinct uh, feel yes. to it. Yeah, I mean, we really, I, I can't take credit for this word, but on Fringe, they would call it the myth alone, where every episode is a standalone about the whole myth. And so that's the formula. We have. And sort of deepens your, under, your understanding of, of, of the, the, whole, the whole group of yeah, characters. Yeah, completely. Even though you focus more on one of them. Alrighty, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.